The Gotthard Base Tunnel is the longest and deepest rail tunnel in the world. 57 kilometers through the Alps, literally through. It's called a base tunnel because it's at the base of the mountain. At its deepest point, there are more than two kilometers of rock above. It's so far down into the ground that the earth in there is hot. Without ventilation, the air temperature would be more than 40 degrees. Around the turn of the century, there were two devastating fires in road tunnels under those mountains, and the authorities here in Switzerland want to make sure that nothing like that can ever happen again. How they do that is fascinating, so here's what's going to happen. We're going to see the control centre that watches over the tunnel, and also visit one of the intervention centres, with the firefighters and first responders that will step in if the worst were to happen. And then, I want to show you what I reckon is the most important bit of safety equipment. It isn't anywhere near the tunnel, and most people will probably never notice it. But before that, we start at the control centre, just over there. In the Gotthard Base Tunnel, there are six freight trains and two passenger trains per hour, per direction. This means that uh, at the same time, there are several trains inside the tunnel in both of the two tubes. The Gotthard Base Tunnel is divided into three thirds. If there is a disturbance in one of these thirds, the train can be diverted at one of the two changement points into the other tube to bypass the disturbed section. There are different sections to control the traffic. So the signal box controls the track, the movement authority is, is given by the signal box and by the traffic controller. If there is a disturbance on one of the systems in the tunnel, then we have different possibilities. First of all, we get noticed by an alarm that there is a problem. They first of all try to uh, fix the problem remotely. If this is not successful, they can send people on site to try to fix it. This tunnel is actually a bit of a tourist attraction in itself. You can get driven in, down a service tunnel on a guided tour and end up at this reinforced, windproof visitor's window with eight centimetre thick glass and watch the trains go by at anything up to 230 kilometres an hour. That was terrifying. <laughs> If a train has a technical problem, first of all, the train driver tries to reboot the train system. If it's not successful, we have the firefighting train, which goes into the tunnel to tow out the broken train. In case of an incident in the tunnel, let's say a fire, we have two intervention centers, north and south. Intervention center means firefighting stations. They get an alarm and within five minutes, Usually both of the firefighting trains go into the tunnel from north and from south at the same time to fight the fire. They have the obligation to be on any point in the tunnel within 45 minutes. Firefighting train is a convoy of firefighting trucks on rail. They bring water in, foam liquid, they bring special equipment, tools to handle any possible situation inside the tunnel. At the two emergency stops, there is a possibility to refill the water. If people have to be evacuated in the tunnel, they do not walk out of the tunnel because it's much too far. The train brings them to one of two evacuation stations, where the passengers can go into the evacuation tube. This evacuation tube is under pressure, so fresh air is streaming in. They are safe because they have enough oxygen and smoke cannot enter. Then they go to the next evacuation section where the evacuation train is waiting for them. We have to be able to evacuate the entire tunnel within 90 minutes. As I went round today, one of the teams said that if there ever is an evacuation or a fire in the tunnel, several other things had to go wrong first. Yes, you can never protect against every possible weird circumstance, but you can try. Which brings me here to what's basically the middle of nowhere in Switzerland, about 15 kilometres away from the south entrance to the tunnel, and to this gantry over the tracks. 15 kilometres sounds like a lot, but at the speed Swiss trains can travel, that could be about four or five minutes. And while it doesn't look like much, this gantry scans every train at speed before it even gets near the tunnel. There are sensors on the track around here too, and if the train has anything unbalanced, any hot spots that look out of place, anything poking out, then it's not going into the tunnel. We have laser systems which measure the profile of a train. Maybe the load of a train has moved and doesn't respect anymore the necessary profile to enter a tunnel. We have heat detection where we can detect overheated axes or overheated brakes. All these controls, they happen at usual commercial speed of the trains and different points all over Switzerland. And we get about 200 alarms per day from these measuring stations. If we do not confirm an alarm, 
Within 30 seconds, the train is stopped automatically. It's not an emergency stop, it's, but it's quite, you, you feel it. If a train seems to be wrong, it gets to a side track where it has to wait. If the inspection says this train is okay, then it can continue its journey. If not, the owner of the train has to resolve the problem before the train can continue its journey. Yes, there are lots of systems in place for if the worst happens, but prevention is better than cure. And for me, this gantry is the most important bit of safety equipment here, because the best solution is to stop problems before they even start.